training. Uh, so, in our last class, we tried understanding what are what are the field value rules. How exactly can we use them in our uh, in designing an application? Where exactly do they fit in, and uh, how we can you know utilize them? For example, we saw the status py status was one of one such uh, you know property using which we were able to customize it and see different um, you know uh, custom uh, statuses which we displayed it by using the assignment shape as well as different shapes where we could configure that perfect now that we are done with that we'll be proceeding ahead and we'll be trying to understand uh, if you remember uh, like couple of classes before we did work on uh, something called as report definition the rule which we used to fetch data from database we used a report definition to fetch data from the database right and uh, today we will be working on one enhancement on that understanding with report definition we will be taking one step further on those reports which we tried understanding and uh, you know how exactly report definition can be tweaked around how you can pass parameters how you can uh, create uh, custom reports is something which we'll be seeing uh, like we said uh, that the reporting part is not huge in the sense pega is not used as a standalone reporting platform but any cases which are pending and if any cases are to be actioned those are some reports which get generated and a manager gets a report of it for example if you are working under someone and if you are going on a leave if a manager is managing around 10 members and of those 10 members he has to maintain a, a list of who is available when for example some might someone might take a 20 day leave because he has a wedding someone might take three days sleep because he, he was sick or something but all this has to be he can't go to each and every candidate and figure out that he should be able to see that on one consolidated place yes or no right do we agree perfect so what we are saying here is managers need reports who needs reports manager right for example your father needs a report of the entire day for example if he has four kids end of the day when he comes home he asks each one of you hey what did you do what did you or he asks your mom how did the day go did they study today or stuff like that that is one like you know micromanagement level of reporting which happens in our homes we see that from childhood that my uh, our mothers keep reporting to our father oh yeah of this uh, two two of them they completed the homework but this uh, one of the kid he didn't study he did this thing stuff like that or if someone is not keeping well but these two are fine and but he is not doing well so this is reporting what is reporting giving data about a certain process to a higher official in applications it's usually managers right managers tend to ask reports about everything for example how how much work is completed they want a report to understand about the completion similarly if you are working in a call center industry they will the, the manager will ask you how many how many calls have you completed how many of them have been covered today how many are left over all these things he needs a report he can't go to for example if there are 40 people reporting to him he can't go to each and every one and understand oh is this what you completed? No, he won't be doing that. He will go into the system. He will check the report. How many is each and every guy completed? And he will take a look at that. Yes or no? Makes sense, right? Perfect. So we will try to create few more work objects. Okay, we will run this flow and we will create few more work objects. And I tell you why do we need that. I'll create few more we should create one five zero zero one or something like that Also, what we have seen so far is whenever we try to create a work object, you will see that 
the, uh, the py work page which gets generated will have will gets populated with data yes or no we see that right we see that the py work page which is there it gets populated with data so i'm creating around five work objects okay just to have sufficient data to deal with today that's why i'm trying to create this many so i have created five so let me just open the clipboard and show you something when whenever we try to create a work object there is some data which pega automatically is adding yes or no? like for example c5005 is what i have right now on my screen and then i can go to poa work page and see what is available there so whenever i just told create work object but pega automatically has added so many properties here if you see who created this is something which is captured as part of px create operator right like the property itself tells it is a operator who has created this particular work object px create operator and this operator sometimes this can be id also right so it is telling the create operator is this the operator name is admin admin at alpha is the operator id and the operator name is admin there is also a property called as px update operator px update operator see who has updated it admin at alpha has updated it in the same way if some other user updates it the same thing gets captured here though it was created by admin at alpha if any other person maybe nikhil modified it his id and details will get captured here these are out of the box properties also very important is when was this created that can be tracked by px create date time see these are out of the box properties which pega automatically is creating so that this is metadata which is necessary for you right these are some properties which are necessary you want to know when this was created though you didn't add a field to capture that pega is automatically doing it this is the advantage of using a, a bpm platform like pega so it does all this tasks for you capturing all this information though you might feel why do we need this this is metadata which is necessary where we can utilize this we'll see that later don't worry about that similar we also saw the py status right what will be the status of the work object if you see most of them will be right now in pending customer info right py status work all five are in pending customer info let's try to push them further and you know let's have a few of them in pending vehicle info okay five i'll have this also in pending vehicle info perfect so two we have marked as pending vehicle info that's okay this data looks good for me no problem so we understood uh, we created few work objects and we also saw a few out of the box properties like px uh, create operator create operator name uh, px create date time which tells me wh what time it was created same day the status is their py status work and the object the work object is also nothing but py id we have seen that right we have seen that that py id will hold the c hyphen five zero zero four value similarly whatever work object you create will be held by that now let us say my manager has a requirement where he wants to see what are the cases which were created in past seven days okay he wants a report to be able to see what were the cases which were created in past seven days so one interesting thing here is um, there are portals which will help you access or do stuff for managers a manager do you think a manager will be accessing into the designer studio and looking at all this stuff will he be getting access to this no right yes no do you agree will the manager have access to this particular uh, developer studio portal where he will come into developer studio portal and check how exactly it is done no he won't be doing it he will have a specific portal something like this if you see this is a user portal a portal which only users will see here they won't get you know properties and all those rules here he will they will only see you know what a user has to see for example when you open zomato 
you will see what as a user as a customer what you can see only that thing you can see you can't see as a, uh, the same way when the restaurant logs in restaurant guys will see what as a restaurant what user interface they have to see only that they will see they won't see what a customer will be seeing do we agree yes or no guys similar exactly similar to uh, for example if you are taking a uber when you log in you will see book a ride book a ride option is what you will see however the driver who is driving he will see where is his nearest pickup yes or no these are two different user interfaces right and that varies based on who you are if you are a driver then you have that user interface if you are a uh, rider then you have a rider interface same thing for zomato if you are a restaurant you have a different user interface and if you are a customer who is getting food then you have a different user interface that we should understand when we say user interfaces with respect to a specific user then we call, we call them as portals for example like dev studio is a developers portal similarly for users you will have user portal yes or no right same thing i am able to access from the header bar i see that there is a launch portal and i can click on launch portal and i see that a user portal is getting launched okay this is quite new you know with the ui and all is like you know it's updated and it's latest on 8.7 there's 8.8 .8 also but we don't have a personal edition but for 8.7 this is how it looks as a user when uh, insurance uh, operator logs in this is what he will be seeing he sees that there is a work list for him and these many items are sitting in this work list makes sense guys see all he has to do is click go and get started on doing these many cases which are there this is exactly similar to a customer support portal right a customer support guy when he comes to work he will see that in his list these many customer requests are have come in and he can action on any each of these. does it make sense guys yes no and inside the team he can also chat he can tell hey i am if this is an internal chat which is specific for team here he can tell i am taking c hyphen five zero zero four and then he can tell post what this does this will be pulse is something which the the team will be using internally to chat where they can uh, someone who is picking this up if he tells here so next user who comes in to work he can he sees that this is already taken right he can see this in chat of course when he picks the when the guy picks that up this will be assigned to him it won't be available for anyone to pick also you can chat here this is one simple feature just letting you know how exactly you can use uh, from a user's perspective how we will be using this we don't know what uh, what this is built on when you look at this user interface you don't know if it is built on pega or what because this is looking like any other application which supports customer requests yes or no right it's telling welcome to alpha auto insurance perfect so this is one slight understanding about you know how a portal can be launched from pega perfect so but our focus today is understanding how exactly we can customize reports so our requirement is we need to create a report that fetches all the work objects which are waiting in any different statuses for example pending vehicle info pending customer info these statuses we want to fetch these records so let us see how we can do it to do that what i will do is what do we do if we have to fetch records from database What do we do? What is the rule we will be using? Very good. So, report definition is something we want to use. So, let us say I'll try to create one report definition. I do have one report definition which is already existing. If you expand report and see, there is one data table editor report which we created. That's fine. So, now I want to create another report definition for fetching statuses. Let me right click on report definition under the work class and when I say create this should give me a pop-up where I will be able to create that okay. 
perfect so this generated a form where i will be giving my name for this report definition all i did was create clicked on my work class through app explorer right clicked on report definition and i told create a new report definition for me let me give that a name let me call it fetch vehicle status report definition i want to create a report definition which is called as fetch vehicle status i will say tab so this got populated it has to be as part of auto insurance application under the work class i'll say create and open perfect so this should give me a query tab a chart tab report viewer stuff like that perfect no problem so i got these so now what all do i want as part of this report I can specify that in columns right if you remember in the states table we just had two columns which we wanted yes or no we we created that and we extracted stuff for that particular uh, uh, report definition i think we created that under the states table that's why it is not visible here if you open the states table class we can access that uh, I'll show you that also so it makes sense what we had created and what we are trying to create under the reports category if you want to see what was created very recently you can click on from the records category you can go to report definition this should open right and then here you will see you know get states report did we create this very recently right 11 6 is when we created perfect and i open this you will see we needed only two columns there but today our requirement is not just these two columns the states table only had these two columns that's why we use that but today our requirement is different today we want to show a report which has statuses for uh pending statuses for which whichever cases so to do that we saw that there are some out of the box properties which pega already provides which will help us design the report right we saw that right we have seen few properties i want my work object id the py id what is that to get that i can just say dot and click on drop down see automatically pega is giving me the py id okay i want the py id and what should the name appear on the report it should appear as case id this is exactly similar to how we did the mapping on user interface where we told state code and state name uh, someone is, has to go on mute okay if you're not talking please go on mute perfect so if you see here i am telling the source has to be py id i want this particular column on my report that's why i'm saying i want py id i also want to see what is the status of my work object so i'll do dot and i will say py status work also i want to know who created this particular case for that i have something called as px create operator yes or no i want the id as well as the name if i want the name also i can say px create operator name right see i have two three four columns now and i also want to know when was this created for that i have px create date time none of these properties we defined right these are out of the box properties which Pega is providing us. All we are doing is creating a custom report definition and extracting that data from database. Yes or no? Right? Perfect. So all we have done here is whatever we have done before. We have just created a report definition. There we used only two columns where we are using more columns. That's what we are doing. Let us save this. Saved. Now let's try to run and see if this is working. This should technically give us all the work objects which are present in our system. Is this giving us that? Is 
SRO. Also, you see, though we have chosen the column as PYID, the display name is coming as case ID. Is this, this will be convenient for the user when he looks at this, right? He doesn't want to see dot PYID here because it does, he doesn't understand that. Only a PEGA developer understands those properties, PY, PX and PZ. That is why we use these sort of convention. The column, the property on the column is different. However, the display name should be something which is user friendly, user friendly in the sense which a user can understand. When a user looks at this report, he understands, oh, this is a, the work objects report from this particular application. Why? Because he sees the case ID, different statuses, these case IDs are in currently right now. Who created it? The ID, oh, the operator's name. And when was this created? Right? Those stuff quite easily understandable is what I'm saying thinking right are we able to understand perfect so but now right now for example if i want to know which which are these which of these are i only want details for example let us say uh, application has 20000 case cases like this i can't give with them all 20000 cases like this right they only want to know for example which are pending customer info right which of these are only pending us only want only those details they want so then my report right now is not sufficient it's not capable of only showing that it is showing everything but i don't want that how can i achieve a limited set of data where i can apply certain conditions using which the report will be extracted to do that if you slightly come down in this report definition rule there is something called as filters see are we able to see filters? Edit filters. Yes, perfect. So here what I will say, which column do I want to filter on? We want to see which whichever work objects are in pending vehicle info status. Okay. So for that, what property holds the value uh, of status? Very good. So I can choose dot py status work and what I can say i can choose the value whatever the value is pending iphone vehicle info right yes or no we can choose this right and i want to get it for past seven days whatever was created in last seven days only that i want for that i can add another filter i want whichever is in pending vehicle info and i also want for last seven days if you see whenever i say add here it tells it get it gets added here see f1 and f2 i'll explain you what this means so i'm saying the create date time is equal to it shouldn't be good i want in last seven days right uh, so I can do what I can do for this thing. I can click on select values. I guess yes If I click on select values Pega automatically gives me oh you want for current year last year last quarter What do you want is what it is telling? I want seven days. Let us see if we have last seven days See I do have a last seven day option, right? This way we can choose anything we want but right now I'm just focused on picking up whatever was created in last seven days see all we did here was created a report definition put all the columns we want and we told we also want to filter the data the data was too huge we didn't want to see new new status works work objects and all we just wanted whatever is in pending vehicle info yes or no and which was created in last seven days for that we came to the filter section added one filter dot py status work in the sense we are telling whatever data is in pending vehicle info and which was created in last seven days if this two criteria is met please pull out the data and show me able to understand yes no i can repeat if you want guys perfect so to understand that what we did we ran this report beforehand Beforehand, we ran this report once without adding any conditions and we saw huge set of data 
like so many new work objects and all we saw and then we also saw something which we created today now we want to filter that so to do that we have added these filter conditions f1 and f2 what this means is it tells the first filter one condition and filter two condition both should be met if both are met whatever they are, whatever records match both of these uh you know filters only fetch out those records is what we are saying we are saying for example if we have a bunch of students in the class someone who has scored more than 60 in maths could be the first condition also someone who has scored more than 60 in science we want data of that this is exactly similar to that condition right f1 and f2 we are telling these two conditions should match in the on that data okay with that understanding let's save this and run Now my data looks small. Yes or no? Is my data looking small? Only two work objects have come back. Make sense, guys? Yes? No? Do we understand how we can apply filter conditions on reports? Perfect. So let us see if we can add this report to, you know, user portal. Let us open the launch the user portal. I think we already launched it, right? So this is my user portal. And if you see, there is a reporting category on the user portal. Let me close it and launch it again. So everyone understands where I can go there from. So from your developer studio, there is something called as a launch portal on the header bar. Just click on that. You will see user portal. Sometimes you will have manager portal also depending upon which version you are using. So I'll click on user portal. Right now it brings me here, showing me uh, some pulse and my work list and stuff like that. If you come to the left side bar, like the developer studio, the user portal also has a lot of stuff. He can create a work object from here. He can visit his dashboard. There is a home tab also. There are spaces and there is something called as reports. Let's click on that. I don't see any reports here, right? Do you see any reports here? Like his specific reports? Yes, no. Right, there are no reports. I don't see any reports. It tells zero reports. Other reports are there, but I'm not interested in that. But right now it tells like zero reports are here. Perfect. Now, let us come back to our developer studio and see if there is any way in which we can give access to this particular uh, reports on that portal. We'll try to understand that. Uh, we do have a tab called a report here, I guess. Yes. So if you come to something called as a report viewer, there are multiple tabs in a report definition. We always worked on the query tab, which is where we are building the query using which we'll be calling the, uh, we'll be accessing the database and getting the data. Okay, these are the columns which we wanted to get. So that's why we are just working here. So, but to enable this report to be available on the portal, there is a tab called report viewer under which you will have option to make it display on report browser. I mean, are we able to find that? Right. There is an option called display in report browser. When you click here, only then these will be available on your portals to for the users to access yes or no and from this drop down you should be choosing open cases for that report to be available we have to choose open cases right from the report browser let us see how this change impacts or like you know helps us out in the uh report browser let's okay we'll just save this i'm saving this thing what all i did was created a report definition added five properties there added two filter conditions right these two filter conditions and i came to the report viewer and i am enabling one checkbox which tells 
display this in report browser and I chose open cases here perfect actions let's try to refresh I think I have to close and open I guess let us see just slightly new though in other application uh, other versions we did have case manager portal through which we accessed it but this doesn't seem similar should come up okay so if you remember uh, let me uncheck this hold on i think i can show you from here right now it is not enabled and let me save this and let me refresh this yes yeah this is one second yeah so all i did here was i disabled that idea i don't want to because i want to show the difference if i do it that way i won't be able to show the difference so i came to all reports category and let me try to look for my report what was the name of my report fetch vehicle status right this is there are a lot of reports so let me look for this particular report right let me refresh this tab and okay ideally it should shouldn't come up but it is coming up it got updated like two minutes ago let me click this ideally it shouldn't show me here because i have not enabled it that's what i want to achieve but it is like it's slightly slow it doesn't get updated right then and there that's fine no issues fetch vehicle status so there is this report which is coming up which we will be using uh, ideally it shouldn't come up let us see i think it's some glitch in reporting but if I try to open it, it won't open as well. It looks like. Okay, perfect. It got open. So to enable this to be available here, you will need to enable this particular option. I enabled that and then I disabled, but somehow that, that thing got saved there. What happens is whenever we try to create a report definition uh, and enable that, a category gets created as well as a shortcut is what I clearly remember. I mean, uh, we don't dig deep because it is not something which is meant. So if you see, they know to read. Yeah, whenever I, uh, as soon as I created that particular, uh, enabled that particular option, a shortcut got created because of which this shortcut is visible here on the reporting. If you see, there is a shortcut to click and come to this report. Anyways, that's that's not a what we are looking at. We are looking at how exactly we can enable that for this particular report browser, which got enabled, and I'm able to access that report. Yes or no? Are we able to see that report? Yes, no, guys. Perfect. So the takeaway from today's class, importantly, is how exactly can you pass filters? To a report definition how exactly can i pass filters to a report definition is something which you should be taking away that can be done from here but right now for example these values are static or constant these are not dynamic or it's not being passed as a dynamic attribute if you see for example tomorrow they want to change the status from pending vehicle info to pending auto info let us say tomorrow they have to say don't you think we have to change this open this rule and change this as well yes or no for us to fetch the cases with that particular status do we agree guys yes no Tomorrow, let us say the status got changed. They want to modify. They don't want vehicle pending vehicle info. They want pen, pending auto info. Let us say. and But this report was hard coded with this value. Don't you think we will have to come and change here also? Right? 
but that is not a good design in it in programming or in any development platform hard coding is not a good practice hard coding values is not a good practice because it adds more work to you because any every time there is a any, even a slight change you will have to change all the places where you have hard coded yes or no so to tackle such scenarios we do have something called as parameters we do have something called as parameters if you see the fourth tab on this particular report is parameters what are parameters uh, we have worked we have learned algebra right and uh, when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 3 calculate this particular uh, thing through you know by applying a plus b whole square have we worked on such math problems yes no equating based on what value is given we lot of problems where they give it tell where they tell assume that x value is something and y's value is something same way here also parameterization is also exactly similar to that where you don't want to hard code the value but you want to pass it as a parameter it's exactly similar to property but you will be passing it you know as a reference not by exact hard coded value we will see that how exactly uh, we can uh, you know achieve that so what we have to understand is why parameters are needed is so that first of all it avoids you helps you avoid hard coding and also helps you pass uh, values through that parameter we will see how exactly we can pass those parameters okay so we saw that uh, this particular record is uh, is using pending vehicle info uh, as a hard coded value all i want to do is i want to see if i can you know remove this hard coding from this particular property and if i can create a parameter for that to do that what we can i'm thinking of uh, maybe uh, create uh, another report definition rule maybe okay from app i can do that or okay i haven't shown you that also right let me show that so for example if i want to create another version of a similar rule all i can do is there is one option called as save as you know like in files we can do save as exactly similar to that we can do a save as in pega also wherever you have the save option you can go on the side and click on this drop down you will see save as option just click on this okay and let us give but the name should be different after you do save as the name should be different if you are trying to save it in the same place fetch work object status status is what i'll call this fetch work object status okay create and open so we have two reports now one is fetch vehicle status another is fetch work object status and the all the attributes are same i don't want any difference there now let us say i want to pass a parameter to the filter and i will call that i can call it anything let me call it status status okay and this is what sort of parameter text sort of parameter and i can say the value should be i don't want to pass a value from there i want to pass it from the parameters how will i do that okay okay so what i can do i can say is now that i have created it i can save this right here on the query tab what i want to do is i don't want to pass the hard coded status value what i will do i have an option when as soon as i declare a parameter now that gets accessible or i can use that here how can i use that i can type param param dot and i will see the status do you guys see this
are you guys able to see this perfect all i did was all i did was created a a parameter called status and i am choosing it here param dot status now you see i have not hard coded any value sir no but i haven't passed any value e either right i haven't passed where have i told that i want pending vehicle info i haven't told that's fine let me just try to run this and see what does pega give me when i pass something like this now it is giving me a entire report all new everything it is showing me yes or no it's not filtering these records is it are we able to understand right because we have not passed anything specific like that so when i'm running this report it is showing me all the records with every status it is showing me that but our requirement is only load those records uh but it doesn't have to display and i want to see only for whatever status is given there yes or no whatever status is given only for that i want to check but i am not i have not passed that here so i'll do one small change here and i will try to edit the filter options right i can edit the filter options how can i do that yes select values no i don't want to do it through this i want to edit these filter conditions f1 Mm, okay let me open the kind of settings for this okay perfect so allow any changes allow changes read only filter only visible uh, values this is not the one allow any changes okay let me default to this and use null if empty okay let me so all i am doing here is i am opening the status uh, filter condition and i clicked on the setting let me come back here again so all i am trying to do here is i came on the settings if you see this gear ring next to the filter condition i am clicking on that for the param row and then here i am trying to check this particular use null if empty condition okay use null if empty i'll say submit let me save and let's try to run this see right now it tells there are zero records because i told if it is empty give me zero records it will not show any record is it showing guys are we able to see these records any of these records here no right perfect last seven days and if you see the filter condition also is work status is null and if there has been no change in last seven days i am telling don't show me anything now let we can also pass inputs to this let us see how we can pass inputs i should be able to edit it here yeah so now for example if i have built a report like this i can easily pass whatever value i want right here i can say for vehicle status i can say new apply can i get my records i just built my report definition once now i can pass whatever i want and i can get the results is or no do we understand the advantage of uh, using you know see now my report definition is not hard coded for one value i can pass whatever status i want and i can fetch them
does it make sense guys how parameterization can help me fetch records do we understand what is parameterization here so we pretty much removed this dependency that this report is only for statuses where you have pending vehicle info yes or no the one the first one which we created is only for this thing if i want another report i will have to create a new report and then i have to add this hard coded value but the other report which i have created the user can any time go and access that and I, it can he can pass custom proper values and he can get the report for corresponding statuses yes or no are you able to understand so it should be showing fetch work object status i do have 30 minutes i guess 10 minutes i guess that's fine but today's takeaway is you know how exactly you can you know pass filter conditions in reports as well as you know how we can parameterize it and make it have only you know specific statuses you can pass at runtime and you can use it yes or no we are able to do that right guys yes are you able to understand how exactly it is done so three tabs we explored query where we are able to pass all the columns we want this is the property which is there in pega but the display name is something which is user friendly this is not a property it is just a display name for that column we did that and we added couple of conditions we want a particular status and which were created in last seven days we added that and those conditions are the filter conditions are specified here this is filter conditions logic what should be the logic f1 and f2 which means this also should be applied and this also should be applied on that data set is what we are saying perfect it's exactly similar to someone who has scored more than 60 in science as well as in maths first line is for science second line is for maths f1 and f2 is that understood and to to make it more generic like you know not just specific to one status we added a status parameter and we told it's a text type of parameter we just told that here and then came back to query typed param and if you click dot you will be able to access all those parameters which you have created status was my this thing i accessed it and then i customized it so that i only i don't uh, i want to keep it empty because whatever i pass as a property value i want to fetch records for those and i'm able to do that yes or no very important whenever you design you should be making sure that you will be using parameters why it gives you more comfort right this is not specific you just built it once use it as many number of times for as many statuses yes or no perfect so that's what that was what was planned for today right understanding how you can pass conditions for reports right and how do you, how you can parameterize them is something which is planned for today mm, if you guys don't have any questions we can call it a day if you have any questions we can talk